Today, I am very pleased to introduce the next speaker and global leader in public health, Dr. Mark Somlinski. They give me a script for Mark. I told them I don't really need a script for Mark. <laughs> Mark is an alumni of the college. Not only that, he's a classmate. So Mark and I, we make the math. We both graduated in 1994. Don't worry, Mark, nobody will calculate your age. <laughs> And since then, uh, we, were in the, we were in the same graduating class. I promised him I would share the picture when one 30 years ago with him. He doesn't want to see it anyway. Uh, and we were both part of this first MPH graduating class. And when it was a program within preventive medicine, the College of Medicine, back in 1994. So the first graduating accredited class before even MESCOF existed. But Mark actually have been engaged and continue to be engaged with the college since then. He was our alumnus of the year. He came a couple of times for speaker of our event. He was a great mentor working with our students as well as our faculty, especially those who are in infectious epidemiology. So Mark, uh, and as I said, back to the script. He is not an alumnus, but a dear friend, a colleague who continues to support the college. I guess I already said this, Mark, correct? So his work with the Skull Foundation led to the launch of the nonprofit Ending Pandemics organization, where he now serves as the president. Mark focuses on the surveillance of emerging infectious disease like COVID-19 through his work in hotspot countries around the globe. As a global innovator, problem solver whose team improved disease pre prediction, prevention, control, and response worldwide. So Mark inspires us all to think globally, act locally, and pursue health equity across border. So please join me to welcome Dr. Mark Somliniski, our alum, my colleague, and our friend. Hello, everyone. It's really terrific to be here. I loved hearing the inspirational story from the five uh, recipients of the scholarships, and I'm sure there are many more great stories. I loved all the firsts, and thank you, Aman, for sharing my first, which was the first class of this incredible college back when I was a student, uh, and I was getting my MPH as part of my preventive medicine residency program. Um, we did our practicals out at Canyon Ranch. Um, for those of you who know the Mellons, Ina Zuckerman owned the ranch at the time, and who would know all these years later this college would be named after them. Um, so it's great to see that they've continued to really support wellness and health uh, here in the community. So as Imad said, I'm president of Ending Pandemics, and uh, we're an organization that applies philanthropic dollars um, to really help with innovations in disease surveillance. So we try to bring you know, the greatest and best ideas um, and technology to solve problems in over 56 countries. We work only in low and middle income countries. And we help them solve their own problems by bringing technologists and health uh, partners together to create tools and systems um, that are derived by themselves through these partnerships. And then we help support some of the best ideas through the philanthropic dollars that we uh, have been fortunate to have received. Our primary donor is Jeff Skoll, uh, who is the first president of eBay, and he really cares about pandemics, and we've been now doing this work for over a decade. Uh, and like I said, we've impacted over 56 countries. We've worked with all the UN organizations, and our main focus is really to put the public into public health. So in all of the countries that we work, we work to directly engage the general public through tools that allow them to be the eyes and ears to detect anything that's happening and to also be inclusive of all persons within that country and give them a voice uh, in not only disease surveillance, which is our entry point, but in many countries, the tools that we've developed have now expanded to do environmental health issues, food and water security, maternal child health, um, all different issues that have been really exciting to see because our DNA is about One Health. Everything that we have done uh, has been based on the concept of One Health and that you can't separate the environment 
from the human and the animal conditions. And so it's really um, been rewarding to see how much One Health is really embraced across the country. Of course, walking around with an organization name called Ending Pandemics, we're embarrassed during COVID to say, well, you know, we simply failed there. Um, but we're happy to say that some of the countries that we've worked with uh, over the last 10 years have been the most successful in reducing illness and death from COVID, uh, unlike our own country. Um, so maybe we should have put some of our philanthropic dollars into the United States, uh, but we're really proud of our partners across the globe. So one of the things that we did early on um, was to create a, a system called Flu Near You, which is now over a decade old. Some of you may actually be members of Flu Near You. But that was the idea for us to test a methodology. Could you rely on the general public to report illness? So Flu Near You allows you every week when you get a little notification through your email, it basically says, how were you feeling last week? Did you have any of these 10 symptoms of influenza-like illness? Um, or were you feeling healthy? So it's a single system that reports not only illness but health. And we built that system back in 2012 because we wanted to use that approach in developing countries, but we wanted to make sure we understood everything that it really took to build the self-reported system, not only from recruitment, but sustainability and so forth. So that model now is what we've taken to other parts of the world. But like I said, the systems that we've developed in these other countries are based on One Health, and they're not just based on influenza-like illness. But when we got started in 2012, and it had never been done before, we really needed to take a, a, an illness that we thought people could really rally around. And also, we knew that the most likely candidate for a pandemic threat would be a respiratory disease that we've all now witnessed with COVID. So the more we understand about this global threat, uh, the more likely we are to develop approaches to any pandemic threat. So at the time we built Flu Near You, there were a couple other self-reported systems across the globe that were built by my classmates uh, in the Epidemic Intelligence Service of the CDC. And one was in Australia, and one was a collaboration with network countries in Europe. And so we decided after a few years that maybe what the world needed was a global uh, system for tracking illness for flu from the community directly and so we created a system called Global Flu View, which is the first system that exists across the globe that not only has the information coming from the communities on this global platform, it also has all of the data so that researchers and others who are really interested in understanding respiratory diseases and how they spread across the globe uh, would have access to this free and open uh, global system that literally took us five years to build because we had to establish data sharing agreements with each of the countries uh, who make up the initial 10 countries that came together to build Global Flu View um, so that that data would be freely available and then available to researchers no matter where they were across the globe. So we just have a one minute video here to show you about Global Flu View and I'll ask for some assistance here. Uh, don't worry about the sound, you won't be able to hear it, but it's just background music. So you may have noticed that Global Flu View was built in the University of Arizona Colors. And we're very proud to announce today that we are gifting Global Flu View to the Global Health Institute at the University of Arizona um, to be a tool now that we really want to put at a university setting so that students and faculty and others can really use this data, do research with this data, 
help grow the system. We're building a tool as part of Global FluView. So any country who wants to start developing a self-reported system will have access to an automated system that they can build and immediately have their data going into Global FluView. So um, we're giving this intellectual property that's taken us five years to develop to the university as a gift, along with $750,000 to support its growth over the next three years. So. <laughs> So we hope all of you students, whether you're undergrad, MPH, or PhD, will really take advantage of this tool, which literally just got moved to the university yesterday. Um, and so I'm happy. I want to also introduce Nomita Divi, who is our executive director. And we've been spending the last few days with Iman, and we were really happy that all the paperwork got done and, and time for this luncheon so we could share with you this great news. So with that, I thank you very much.